Welcome to the 48 Rules of Retirement. Today we examine Retirement Rule number 36, Look to the East. Poet Robert Browning said, A man's reach should exceed his grasp or what's a heaven for? Browning would be surprised to learn that his observation was the first thing I thought about after my initial yoga class. Unfortunately, my body, like my mind, has been inflexible since youth. I blame this on many influences, parents, the church, El Nino, and whatever other sorry excuse I come up with. My spouse spotted a yoga brochure downtown affixed to a notice board, and she suggested that I give it a try. Spouses perform wonderful acts of kindness for struggling, unfulfilled men, determined to help make them better persons before it's too late. Up to a challenge, I decided to follow her suggestion and try yoga. I was determined to give the asanas my best shot, but I knew that my rigid limbs would inevitably become stuck no matter how hard I tried. At the first class, I arrived with a shoehorn and a bottle of extra virgin olive oil. My instructor was impressed. Not many greenhorns thought to bring creative mechanisms to help provide extrication from the pretzel-like poses depicted in yoga books. She took the shoehorn and olive oil, and suggested we proceed slower than I had anticipated. She rolled out a mat, and invited me to sit on the floor. Thus began what I can only describe as an hour of bliss during which I relearned how to breathe. Who knew, all these years, I was doing it wrong. I was reborn. My body discovered new movements. My limbs became supple, my mind peaceful. I didn't worry about hockey scores, the house assessment notice, the scratch on the car or the fact that I lent a book to a friend, and had not received it back for months. I entered new, contented territory, yoga land. Halfway through the class, each of us received a delicious back massage. We performed a series of slow stretching exercises accompanied by correct breathing techniques. I was getting the hang of it. No body part had yet cracked, popped or dislocated. The ambulance I had ordered as a precaution had long since left. I was beginning to trust my body. It was talking to me, asking, where have you been? The best was yet to come. The last ten minutes was a relaxed meditation. Lying on the floor wrapped in a blanket, we listened to the soothing sound of ocean waves breaking on the shore. There was another delightful massage, this time applied to the neck, face and scalp. Yoga is heaven. My favorite part of the one-hour session is the last ten minutes, not because the stretching of old muscles and ligaments abated, but because it's relaxation time. Our instructor acts as a travel agent. She books delightful mental flights that are far superior to first class with stewardesses clamoring to fulfill every wish and need. The drapes are pulled, lights turned off. We lie supine on mats. A soft blanket is draped over each person. Gentle, soothing music filters through strategically placed speakers, lulling us, a sweet balm for the spirit. We begin to relax every muscle group from large to small and during this process, we are treated to a delicious neck and facial massage. Her soft voice intones. This is your time to relax. Nothing to do. Just relax. We are advised. Go to your favorite place. Feel the sun. Relax. Nothing to do. This is your time. I didn't know that yoga would involve travel. You won't believe the exotic places I have traveled to, all for free in a mere ten minutes. I journeyed to France's Normandy coast on a cliff above the sea watching waves rush in and crash against tapered rock, spraying mist through the air. I was transported to a turquoise lake in British Columbia where I previously camped. I smelled pine trees braced around the lapping water. I returned to Spain and soaked in the Costa del Sol's warmth with children on the beach running into and out of ocean waves. I must ask the others to describe where they travel to during yoga relaxation time. We might qualify for a group rate. Today's retirement affirmation. I keep my accomplishments in perspective by listing them in order of priority on the fridge door. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the Retirement Coach channel as well as provide comments as we seek to expand the videos. Get ready for Retirement Rule number 37, soon to come. Thanks for watching.